Bill Maher is here. He is a comedian and the host of Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. His stand-up routines have made fun of religion for years. Now he brings this point of view to the movies. His new film is religious. Here is the trailer. So joining me is the director, Larry Charles. He has produced shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, Entourage, and Seinfeld. He also directed the box office smash Barat. I'm pleased to have them both here at this time. So what's this movie about, by the way? I just saw this trailer. Well, how would we well, define it? It's like Borat, but I'm in the role of God. You know, it's, it's, Are you in search of God or in search of why people want God? Right. That's more. I'm, I'm really in search of, of uh, finding an answer to the question, how can otherwise intelligent people believe in the talking snake is our shorthand for saying, you know, how can, you know, a nation that's supposed to be a modern industrial nation, a Western democracy, uh, advanced in so many ways, still have 60% of its citizens believe the Noah's Ark story to be literally true. So people who have faith in some God are by definition in your judgment? Well, uh, you know, a personal God, you know, mm. someone who uh, sounds suspiciously like a character that was written in the Bronze Age by people who didn't understand where the sun went at night or what a germ or an atom was. Yes, that a kind God of... A God described in the <clears throat> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, I mean, Thomas Jefferson took the New Testament and threw out all the bells and whistles and the magic tricks and the miracles and just put out the teachings of Jesus Christ. Right. I would subscribe to that in a minute. That's good stuff. Right. And truly revolutionary. But Jesus... But we don't even know if he existed, you know. And to, do I believe that God had a son who he sent on a suicide mission but told them, don't worry, they can't kill you because you're really me? No, I don't believe that. Are you going to rise on the third day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's an old story. That was going around the Mediterranean for a thousand years before Jesus. We show that in the movie. It just blows people's minds. Okay, so what did you set out to do here? Well, first of all, to make a funny, funny movie, yeah, exactly. to make a comedy, and we succeeded. I mean, we, we, now that we've shown it to As people... As they say, and, put some, seat, some people in the yeah, seats. Well, I, I really wanted to make a comedy out of this because I'm a comedian, and it's the, to me, it's the funniest subject in the world. Because... Because it's a talking snake. <laughs> because, because there are people like Sarah Palin who think that Jesus uh, gave pony rides on dinosaurs. I mean, it's, you don't have to go that far to find humor here. A uh, man lived inside of a whale. You know, it so, sort of writes itself. You don't believe the Jonah story either? <laughs> uh, but Not a whale, a big fish. A big fish is what people tell us. But I also honestly believe <laughs> that, well, that's what, every time I would confront yeah, people about such, that, they you're, would, su you're such a skeptic. Yes, I am. <laughs> and so are you. See, everybody, every interviewer comes at me like, you don't believe that? And then when I say, yeah, but do you believe it? Of course they don't right. believe and it either. That they, everyone acts like I'm the only one, but everyone thinks exactly the way I do. And why do you it? believe a man lived in a whale? No, of course, oh, of course. Right. There we go. Why is it skeptical? To, 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 uh, since I was to 11 years that, old. You know? So, yes, sir. tell me about the movie. I mean, putting it together, what did you do? Where did you go? What well, am I going to see? Well, we had a very audacious <laughs> concept. We had a very audacious hypothesis, which is to make a Saturday Night Date movie about yeah. religion. Right. We wanted people to say, well, here's what I've seen Tropic Thunder and The Dark Night. What should I do on Saturday night? I want to have a good time. Right. We want them to come to see Religious. You're going to have a great time. It's a rollicking roller coaster ride through religion. And at the same time, we're trying to set a, a premise here of. Here are the origins of these beliefs, and we realize how shaky those origins are. Here's what's the, uh, the, the consequences in contemporary society, and here's where it's leading, the ominous road to where it's leading. No atheist in foxholes. We're not, we don't say we're atheists, because right, atheist, that term mirrors the certitude that pe religious people have. Um, we say we don't know. No. Right. And... We don't really care. I mean, you're never going to know what happens in the afterworld till you till you die, and then it might just be like that end of Sopranos, just goes to black. <laughs> uh, so you know, just be a good person for the sake of it. So, what do you think happens? I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> and anyone who tells you they have a clue is just crazy, but or or just putting one over on people. You know. The, the way they describe the afterworld with such specifics. Now, this is your mother and your sister talking yes. about the family and the religion in an extraordinary... I'm not sure that's that funny, but it explains everything to me about uh, why, you, why you are the way you are. Why you just laugh 
so much people, of that. People I can know her right? because your mother yeah. is funny. That's Gave my point. Me your mother is funny. Such a gift because she she not only gets yeah. me the first couple of laughs in the right. movie, right? But she sets up the whole thing. I mean, people after they watch that scene, which comes very right. early in the movie, right. they understand where I'm coming from, who I am. It puts me in a context. Once they hear her say, "Every family is dysfunctional," right. they're like, "I know." My, I'm, she's talking. I'm about granting us. you that point, but that was what was interesting about it. I mean, is your yeah. mother? I, you, I understood you from listening to your mother for 30 seconds. Right. right. And exactly. That's, and, then, and that's very and then crucial then, to, just like in a regular fictional narrative, we want to set Bill up. We want to set the character of Bill up. Right. A lot of people only know Bill from real time or from politically incorrect or his stand-up, but he's a three-dimensional person. He, 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 we can relate to him now. We know he comes from a family just like ours, a dysfunctional family, and he has the same questions that we do, and that helps us trust him to take us on this journey. All right, take a look at this. This is another clip here in which you're interviewing Jeremiah Cummings. Who is he? He is a reverend in Raleigh. Is that where I, we found I can't remember exactly. Yes. somewhere he like that. He used to be in Harold, Melvin, and the Blue Notes. Mm. He sang... But he found a more lucrative gig. If you don't know me by now, <laughs> which I say to him, you know, you must have thought that that does seem to have a religious connotation. If you don't know me by now, you could be singing that to the Lord. He was very impressed by that. Not nearly as impressed as he was by himself. All right, roll tape. Here it is. Is religion going to play a role in this election? It's too easy. <laughs> it's shooting fish in a barrel to get laughs from. Exactly. I agree. You know, so totally. it's, you know, people I think are really going to have a good time. Yeah. The election, yeah. I mean, I think the fact that Sarah Palin, somebody who believes in the Bible literally, is in a position to become the second most powerful person in this country is amazingly frightening. And we've had eight years of a faith-based administration, and look where that got us. And I don't think it's coincidence that we're in the mess we are in. Uh, when people who don't believe in rationality get to places of power, they make bad decisions. George Bush did it. There's any number of instances you can name. How many people in that administration uh, were there because they graduated Pat Robertson's law school? Yeah, His, but Tony Blair who has a strong feeling of faith, but he will say, if you believe that I think that somehow I get a message from God about whether I should do this or do that, that's not what I mean. But he's bright and he's, George Bush isn't. And he's also English. He's, he's uh, from Europe, where Europe, European uh, right. countries have, a very, they have much more secularism. And that's one of the issues we d discuss in the movie is that secularism and that liberalism and that progress progressive society has now allowed a very intolerant uh, fringe to enter into that society, which are these very fundamentalist Muslims. The, uh, the most popular baby name in Europe now is Muhammad. And we see this kind of clash of cultures uh, starting to take place in places like Amsterdam and London and those Tony kind of Blair cities. Tony Blair became a Catholic after he left office. Uh, exactly. And, and, and didn't really talk about the conversion before him. Right. And they asked him, uh, why didn't you talk about it? And he said, well, you know, if I talked about it here, they'd think you were a bit of a nutter, mm. was his quote. Right, right. It's the churches are it is like you see, uh, it is like shooting America, fish in a barrel. America, Charlie does <laughs> does have a progressive uh, European country within it. They're all all the people I ever come into contact with, it's and I New travel York. all over. A the social country. democrat, but it's not from just New York. Europe. I go to the red states, and people come to my shows. They're out there. Yeah. There is a progressive country within, but it is being strangled. And in how the often have they elected the president of the United States? This progressive wing within. Well, not at all lately. Right. I mean, even Bill Cl Clinton, Clinton, I guess, was the. But, but he see, was a Democrat, he but was he centrist, was a, a centrist, yeah. and he was also someone. Every, everybody since Jimmy Carter has had to toe the line right. and, and say they're a person of faith. And it hasn't changed in this election. That's correct. It's just getting worse. I mean, for the Republicans to put up this person, this completely unprepared dope, for for this very high position in our government is is maybe the most cynical thing I've seen in politics ever. What do you think of Rick Warren? I think he's an improvement over uh, Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell as far as a guy who's now taken over the leadership of the evangelical movement. He's a guy who's damning least, with faint praise. No, well, I mean, I used to read his book in my act and get Purpose huge life. laughs with it. Purpose Driven right. Life. I used to read it in my act word for word, screams. It's really a funny book. But at least 25 he, million copies. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he, uh, but he walks the walk about being Christian, you know. He does, and deeds. About being, deeds. I should yes. say Christ-like and not just Christian. Right. You right. know, he's 
poverty. I think he's even on the page with global warming. He is. You know, yeah. he gets that stuff. You know, I'll take that any day over Pat Robertson. Yeah, but I mean, Pat Robertson was of a time ago. Pat Robertson not that is not long a, ago. Yeah, well, yeah. but he's not a factor for. I think millions of people still listen to him. He was a factor right after 9 11. Well, he sort well, of succeeded. 9 11 was seven years ago? Yeah. And he sort of succeeded in his agenda. The moral majority succeeded. They got Reagan into office. They got uh, Bush one into office. They got Bush two into office. I mean, it's it's sort of go, it started with Jimmy Carter. He was the first person to really introduce Graham. Jesus. Yeah, you know, but he all... introduced Jesus into the campaign. He was a born again Christian. He was very proud of that. When he lusted lost the election, in his heart. yes, lost it in his heart. And when he lost the election, the Republicans realized there was a whole voting block that had not been tapped. Thus, the moral majority starts to emerge, and things start to change in this country from that point forward. Okay, one more clip. Here is Bill in Speaker's Corner in, Hyde's Par in Hyde Park, right, London. Right. Take a look. I should make this point. That's where you're explaining Scientology. Right, and I yes. should give you the context. That's a place called Speaker's Corner in, in Hyde Park, Park right. London. And every Sunday, people go and they can spiel. They literally bring salt boxes, as yeah. I did, and they spiel whatever they spiel. And, and they get a crowd or not. They get a right, crowd, right. and I, I got a big crowd there. Yeah. And I was telling the uh, what the tenets of Scientology are, as they really are. I wasn't embellishing them or making them up, just to prove the point that they are the rantings of a nutcase. <laughs> and, I, you know, and, and yeah. Scientology is crazy. I mean, if I went through it for you here, I'd have you on the floor. But it's 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 really not that crazier than Christianity right, or Right, you could have done the Old Testament the same way and right. picked out stuff it's that was just, just as crazy. That stuff has been around longer, and Scientology is newer. Right. You know, it seems nuttier. They had to go a little nuttier. Everything starts as a cult, you know. Every, right. It's just a big cult, Christianity. What's your religious background? I was raised uh, Jewish. And? Well, my parents were very secular. They, uh, they were the children of immigrants. They uh, wanted to be Americanized. They wanted me to uh, just, you know, go, go, to, go to Hebrew school, get bar mitzvah, get the money and get out, you know. And, uh, but I was actually very drawn to the metaphysical questions. And, of course, I couldn't find anybody to answer them or even engage me in it. The rabbis just shut down that discourse. My parents weren't really interested in it. But the questions continued to plague me, and they still plague me today. I think one of the things we're talking about in the movie is there are many important questions to ask today. Who are we? Where are we? Where are we going? Where are we from? But those questions are being thwarted. That inquiry is being thwarted by organized religion rather than encouraged by it. Okay, one last clip. This is from Francis Collins, one of the people yes. involved in mapping the genome. Right. Here it is. I think this notion that faith is somehow the antithesis of reason is completely wrong. Explain why. So faith is, in fact, the most rational of all choices when you sort of look at the spectrum between atheism and belief. Let me tell you why. Imagine this table represents all of the knowledge that ever has existed or will exist in the universe. A lot of stuff. Right. And then ask any individual, where in that table is your own personal knowledge right now? And even the most confident of us will draw a tiny little circle. Now, suppose the knowledge of the existence of God is outside your tiny little circle. How then could anybody who's not a wacko say, I know there is no God? Is that not the most irrational position? Does that not require the greatest faith of all? I would argue that already in our little circle, there's evidence of the existence of some supernatural being. The Big Bang, for instance, did the universe create itself? I don't see how that could happen. So what would you think of that? Well, I think that it's interesting that he actually manages to compartmentalize that part of his mind. He's obviously a very, very brilliant man. Mm -hmm. But he goes to great lengths, great spinning, to, to rationalize his belief system, which on some level is very absurd. In fact, in the movie, in the discussion with Bill, you know, he, he doesn't come off quite as well, actually. Well, he, and he just gets things dead wrong. He yeah. says the Gospels were eyewitness accounts. Right. Which they, of course, were not. And I say... They were written some number of years afterwards. De decades, decades at the very after, least. After, maybe and, hundreds of and years he in says, some cases. I said, well, the, the, you know, the nearest one is 40 years after Jesus died. And he goes, well, close. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if something happened today and it wasn't written about for 40 years, would we say that was close to an eyewitness right. account? I don't, I don't think so. If I was going to make a movie, me. You wouldn't like it. <laughs> no. It's too hard work. I don't well, know. No, no, I'll tell you what I would do, though. You mean Charlie I'd, Rose the movie? Charlie Rose the movie. We should talk about that later. Uh, I would say find somebody who made Borat, <laughs> Curb Your Enthusiasm, a, right. and Seinfeld. That's Absolute. who I want to partner with right there.
You're not a dummy. I, I was so stupid. For the longest time, I was looking for a documentary director to do this movie. Yes. And documentaries are so dark and despondent. Yeah, and so he said, find me a comedic and I, writer and finally, director, like, and I've yes. got it made. I've got Larry Charles, duh. Yeah. And so did he call you and say? He, call, he called me, and we had traveled in the same circles for like 25 years, but never met each other. And as yeah. soon as we met, it was like we'd been friends all our lives. We immediately started riffing together, and we knew we, this collaboration could produce something great. Yes. Yeah. And we agreed on religion. Right. religion. I mean, that right. was a, I mean, we couldn't right. have really done this if we had differing views. Right. right. And I don't think we ever really had any space between what we we believed. Right. We are a nation of worshipers. A world of worshipers, not just America. Right. I mean, right. Europe is, a, is an older, more sophisticated culture, and they've gotten over it, and we haven't. We're younger, I think. <laughs> and Islam is even Time younger. Will do it. Right. <laughs> Uh, at least we're at the phase where we're phony about really believing. You know, we don't we don't really do what the Bible says. But the, so there's a so real many, difference in that uh, European attitude about religion and well, the European, American attitude, well, other than uh, the sort of secularism that's there. Well, I would put it on don't a scale. Them. Yes, the, the the Muslims really believe it. You know, uh, our Bible says homosexuality. Well, we should put them to death, but nobody takes it seriously. Nobody does it. The Muslims will really do it in Chop Chop Square in Mecca, and the Europeans they don't even go to church, believe it. I mean, even in Italy, which is, you know, where the Pope lives, over 50% of the people say they're atheists. And in most European countries, it's a higher percentage than that. England, 80% right, right. and so forth. So they have chucked it out the window. And by the way, did not collapse. Right. Their civilization did not collapse without it. But let's not forget there are a lot of customers out there, and Islam and Christianity are like Avis and Hertz or right. like uh, Pepsi and Coke, and they're going to go out. They want to get new customers in the third world, South South, right. uh, South America, <clears throat> Africa. Those are places where there are new customers, and they're going out there, you know, trying to convert people. We will probably so, see a black pope in our life because that is where the new people are. Well, he's on. There's on the great mentions list. Right. Yes. Already. Yes. But right. that is, they they have to find people who are not onto them. <laughs> Which means people who up till now have right. been worshiping dirt and living yeah, in a rolled the, up ball. Don't get a chance to see our movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, <laughs> in the end, I think it was Larry David who said about you. I read this quote: "said I don't think he likes to be ordinary. I think Larry will be you will be remembered as one of our great satirists. That's the field he toils in, creating satire for the masses." Well, I'm very humbled by that. Larry is my mentor. He's uh, he's been like an older brother to me. He may very well be the most important influential person in my adult life. So everything I've learned, I've kind of learned from him, really. So I, that's a very sweet thing to say. Well, what have you learned from him? Well, he is another person. Like, like He's a savant, and so is Bob. I mean, they have to do what they do. They don't have any choice. They can't make adjustments. This is what they do. This is their vision. If you accept it, great. If you don't accept it, it's not going to change. This is what they do. If they're sitting on a bench, a uh, bus stop, they'll be saying the same things as they will on stage. So that, that is who they are. They're very true to themselves. They completely trust their instincts. And that's how Bill is, too. Bill trusts his instincts. He's willing to even alienate people that like him in order to speak the truth. And there's just very few people out there who have that kind of vision. I think of him as godlike. Yes, I do, too, obviously. <laughs> See how easy you know, it, it is to yeah, become yeah. a god. I mean, you really just have to well, show I'm like, up. I'm like your John the Baptist. You know, let me go out there and work it. Wow. Yeah, I'll work it Watch for you. Watch your head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Really? Religious, religious. That's not yes. your fault. We made up that word in <laughs> this art to say. But you said it well the first time. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. It's like you're saying religion and then you go to ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Just like religion. Anyway, we thought right. about this and before. And that's the bottom line, by the way. It is funny. If you're really looking for a fun time, believe it or not, this is a great movie to go see. It's about religion, but it's a great, great fun but time. I also think it will send a message. If this movie does well the first weekend, I think it will send a message that there is this nation within a nation, and we need to be reckoned with a little bit. Yeah. There's not there's 435 members of Congress. Not one of them would ever say that they're an atheist or an agnostic, and 16% of the country says they are. So we don't really have true diversity in Congress. That's fake diversity. Oh, we have a black and a Latino and a woman. Yeah, but they all think alike. Right. How about thought diversity? Okay, when, when you were making this, yes. did, did anybody get angry at you? And <laughs> everybody <laughs> got angry. <laughs> kidding. No we got thrown happening. out of literally every place we went. The Vatican yeah. and Salt Lake City Temple. What would they say to you? Get away! Get out! 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 Well, yeah. you know, they always we pull out, yes. what if you're wrong? Yeah. You know, Jesus said that to me. Yeah. What if you're wrong? What if you're yeah. wrong? And then, then Bill asked him, what if he's wrong? And you that know, threw everybody in for a loop. I'll apologize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Great you. to see Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure.
Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.